Hi, my sweet friends. I am on a walk with Pokazanki Gawaganchi. I do miss my hubs. Um, yesterday I was in the car with my daughter and she was like, I'm really excited for daddy to come home because I feel like the house just runs better when he's here. <laughs> it's like, okay, would you be a little more specific? Can you elaborate? She just said, I mean, no offense. I feel like all the trains leave the station when he's here. And when he's not here, it's kind of a free for all. <laughs> I mean, I guess there's some truth to that, but I thought I was doing a really good job here. I mean, I thought I was holding the fort down pretty darn well, but apparently there have been some complaints. I've been doing this 15 second worship thing. I just had this idea. Anybody can do anything for 15 seconds and there was actually a book written about that in the 80s. So I've been doing this worship of, I love you Jesus, empty me Jesus. I love you Jesus, fill me Jesus. Guys, it works. It just feels good, you know, because sometimes I feel like it has to be this event. No, 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 no. Praying in any situation anywhere is always appropriate and a lot easier than I make it. My son's car got stuck in the grass this morning because it's been raining like crazy here. And um, I told him not to park it under our tree because our tree guy told us that the tree is going to fall, which is very, very, very sad. Before I go on, you just have to check out this tree. So gorgeous. Oh my gosh, it just keeps on going. Isn't that a beautiful tree? The tow truck came and pulled the car out, which was fabulous. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it's Jasmine. Is that Jasmine? Holy Spirit, activate. Sweetie, that's what's called private property. Honey, uh-uh. Get your hairy butt over here, boo. Come on. Yeah. Such a good listener for once in your life. Somebody wrote in one of the comments. He said, the best part of waking up is Jesus in my cup. <laughs> I just thought that was so funny. Doesn't that, wasn't that like the Folgers line? Anyway, yeah, I have not had Jesus in my cup first thing in the morning at all. The Bible says the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Uh, it's one of my favorite biblical scriptures and it is so true. And so my heart's just been full of frustration and impatience and part of me just feels like I'm a little bit at my wits end with things, you know, I'm just like not patient. Where's my attitude of gratitude? You can't break and enter, honey. It is not legal. Where are you going now? Yes, I did. I just asked you a question. Where are you going now? So for those of you who were like, oh yeah, our son got a little stuck in the mud, you know, just a little stuck in the mud. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then he tried putting like cement blocks like under, you know, under his car to try and get the tires to go onto the blocks. That didn't work so well. If you want that Jesus vibe, you just got to subscribe. Don't forget to push the little, uh, the little alarm bouton to get every cow preach that comes through the ethos. I have all the kids here and it's so exciting. It's just so cozy and amazing with the kids all running around doing their own thing, school, work. It's very hard to get everybody together. And I never really sympathized with moms who would talk about how amazing it is to have all the kids under one roof again. I never really totally understood it, so it was hard for me to comprehend how exciting that feels. Um, but yeah, we're all together, and uh, I apologize to all the mothers that I used to be like, oh, how nice, I'm so happy for you. And now I'm like, I oh, know, <laughs> it's the best, this is so great. <laughs> but I'm getting a lot of hate about the tree, I'm not gonna lie. A lot of hate about the tree. Um, my Charlie Brown tree did not go over very well with the kids. What can I say? I think sadly this is our last year with the Charlie Brown tree, unfortunately. Guess who's coming home today? That's right! Chill is back! Um, I'm so excited. You guys, 40 days it's been since I've seen Billy. I'm really excited. I have a nice dinner waiting for him and stuff. I also have something else waiting for him. Cinderfella's back. Oh, oh. <laughs> Came outside because it's just such a gorgeous day. And <clears throat> I don't know, I find that when I step outside, even if I don't expect it, it always happens. I just feel better. I just psychologically, there's something about praising and gazing that just turns my whole day around. My daughter just told me that the uh, orange tree is ripe. So something happened 
a few days ago that I haven't shared about yet on CalPreach. And um, I guess the reason I didn't share about it is because I felt a little shameful with the way I reacted. Um, an old girlfriend of mine did something that just rubbed me the wrong way. It really hurt my feelings actually. And my blood started to boil and I just started to get, there are very few people who can make me feel shaky when I get angry or like, I, I, and I've, I'm not like an angry human being. When I do get angry, I know I'm angry because I start to start to literally shake and quiver from the inside out. I didn't turn my anger into a prayer. I didn't call a friend and process it. I just pretty much internalized it. That is not a healthy thing to do. Ooh, here comes my orange delivery. Special delivery. All right, here's the taste test. Thank you, sweetie. Okay, so this is from our tree. Mm. Are you kidding me right now? A lot of vitamin C in there. Yeah, it was something hurtful about me and my channel because it was such a personal thing because I have such an attachment to Cal Preach. Ain't nobody gonna throw shade at Cal Preach, no. My, my work and what I'm doing, anger is an infectious root and that if we don't pull out that root and deal with it, look at it, open it, dissect it, figure out why we're so angry and get to the other side of the anger, which usually the other side of anger is hurt, then it just becomes so toxic. But I also think it's just immensely important for us to remember that like Jesus, what he did on the cross, he died for every single wrongdoing that ever happened to us in the past and every wrongdoing that will ever happen to us in the future. And I lose sight of that, trust me, all the time. Like I said, I didn't even, I didn't even take this to the cross until just like now. But it is true that it's usually the people who we love the most that can get us the most furious. For me, if somebody I really love who's incredibly close to me, the idea of them being disappointed in me or not approving of me or dissatisfied with me in some way, I can't live with that. And then there's that word forgiveness, um, which, you know, I heard, I think it was Tim Keller. <laughs> if I hear anything wise, it's usually Tim Keller. Um, and he said, if you want true justice, you're never gonna get it if you don't forgive. If you can't forgive, you're the one living with that toxicity. You're the one living with that anger. And where's the justice in that? Oh my gosh, there's a bee. <laughs> oh my gravy. Oh my gosh, go away. Ah! Ah! He's chasing my phone. If he had stung me, I never would have forgiven him. No, you can't stay angry at a bee. I'm learning that hatred is not just like, you know, raging around, angry, wanting to, you know, kill somebody, whatever, you know, uh, that word should not be used lightly, but you know what I'm saying. I mean, have you, have you ever heard that somebody who you particularly don't like or that you're in a gripe with, that something didn't really go their way, whether it was a job or a relationship and on the inside you were a little bit like, <laughs> You know what I mean? That's the seed of hatred. That's where it starts, you know, gaining pleasure from somebody else's failure. I guess I'm human. I've definitely had moments like that in my life. I'm not going to be untruthful here because that's not what this channel is about. I'm not proud of it. It's actually really ugly and embarrassing to admit, but I think all of us want to be validated and accepted so badly. I mean, why do you think people are so obsessed with social media. I have a YouTube channel. I mean, hello. Of course, I read my comments and of course, the ones I tend to focus on are sometimes the ones that are like, you know, your voice is so annoying. I wanna jump off the fourth floor of my condo and kill myself, go get a real job, you know, stuff like that. It's like, I, I literally got that comment by the way. Instead of focusing on the ones like, oh my gosh, China, I'm opening my Bible for the first time in like six years and I'm starting to pray to Jesus again. And I mean, obviously those are very moving. I think it's just natural to have a tendency to focus on the really mean ones. Madonna once said that she was playing in front of, you know, singing in front of a audience of 80,000 people at some stadium and everybody was just, you know, hands up, singing every word, loving her. 
And there was this one guy in the front row that was just sitting there with his arms crossed and he had this like scowl on his face. And she said, for the rest of the show, after I saw him do that, I was performing for one person. I was performing for that one man. And she said, and I never ever got him to change his expression. And it still haunts me to this day. But the cool thing about our walk with the Lord is that really, we really should only be seeking the approval and the applaud of one person and that's the Lord. Really, it's about what does Jesus think of me? What does your creator think of you? Why did he go to so much trouble to create you, to architect that masterpiece? That's what it is. Every soul is a masterpiece. All of us are one of a kind, original. And I'm getting really corny, but it's true. I believe that honest, spirit-filled prayer, and when I say spirit-filled, what I basically mean is he wants us to worship him in spirit and in truth, and he wants us to pray. It, the Bible says that the spirit's willing to pray, but the flesh isn't. So I'm going to go pray right now. That's what I'm going to do. And I guess a good prayer is, Lord, make my flesh willing. I love you guys. Make it a beautiful, beautiful day. Look at this day. Let's go. When life gives you more than you can stand, kneel. Peace of Christ. It's Christmas every day here. How bloody exciting. How are you doing? Doing very well, thank you. Hmm, I wonder what this is. Peace of Christ. <laughs> Holy Spirit activate. Oh, sure. <laughs> it's probably paper towels. Hey you guys, if this video blessed you in any way, I pray that you will subscribe and I also pray that you'll press that little button next to the subscribe because that is an alert button and it will give you a notification every single time there's a brand new Cal Preach. And of course, share because sharing is caring and you just never know who's gonna find the peace of Christ. Amen.